Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Blessed and hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> Go ahead, lift your hands to heaven and get another drink because you're going to need it. <laughs> Before we get started in tonight's message, <laughs> I just want you to know that all things work to the good. Amen. To those who are called. Amen. Are you called? Amen. Do you love the Lord? Then he's going to say, show me. Amen. You know, even Philippians, it talks about the arena of reaching a place where we press on, we press in, we press through. No matter what's going on in our life, no matter where we've come from. Remember, trials and tribulations are is for two purposes. Well, it's multiple, but I'm going to just mention two. Number one is to expose your enemies. Amen? You go through trials and tribulations so God can expose your enemies that you can't see. So whatever you're struggling with is your enemy. Amen. And the other thing is to expose your impurities. Things that are displeasing to God. In other words, why do we go through trials and tribulations? Well, the word says something powerful. When I went astray, I got afflicted. Amen. See, the enemy will outwit you if you're not filled with the Spirit. Amen. I don't care how much of the word you know. The devil knows the word better than you and I. Amen. In fact, he was there when it was all put in place. He'll outwit us in a second. So you can't fall into the arena of religiosity and works. It's about relationship that produces righteousness. Amen? It's about exchanging that area of our carnal nature for the divine nature. It is a continuous process where we constantly cut loose from all emotional attachments of people, places, and things. And exchanging those areas, there's three emotions we want to maintain. That's peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. Everything else is from the enemy. The greatest disease, I'm going to say, the greatest sickness, the greatest killer of mankind is pride. P-R-I-D-E, personal reverence to a deadly end. Pride is a killer. So God will allow me and you to go through certain trials and tribulations. What he's ha what's happening right now in the area of, there are many individuals in the body of Christ, but there are not many individuals that are in the military of Christ. Amen. So God is trying to bring them from the body to the military. Many people come to God because they want. Our trials and tribulations have brought us to a place of in need of Him. You know, so many people turn to the Lord when there's trials or tribulations or struggles or whatever it may be. Traumas. I can tell you, if you stay connected, those areas will not afflict you. And God will begin to train you. He'll begin to bring you through a process where it's not burdensome. Everyone say, not burdensome. Not burdensome. <laughs> In Acts chapter 17. Again, I want to reiterate the arena of, for you and I to be alive in this time, is phenomenal. Amen. I mean, it's phenomenal. In other words, you and I were predestined to be alive now. 
God knew you were coming. He had you somewhere in the closet. Maybe in a shoebox. I don't know. And said, okay, it's time to pull you out of darkness. <laughs> and place his light in you. So many people run back to the closet. It's incredible. <laughs> Come out of the closet. In Acts 17, verse 24, let's speak it together. Verse 24. God who made the world and everything in it, since he is Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Nor is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, since he gives to all life and breath and all things. And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth and has determined their pre-appointed times and boundaries of their dwellings. Everyone say times, times. and boundaries. So that they should seek the Lord in hope that they might grow for him and find him, though he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Surely these times of ignorance God has overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to do what? Repent. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. Hmm. And when they heard all the re of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked and others, while others said, we will hear you again on this matter. Again, we are, times and boundaries are predestined to fulfill our calling, purpose, and destiny. Everything God predestines and ordains determines in our cooperation. Why? Because he will never force you because you have a free will. Amen? In hope that we would seek the life giver and receive a new life from the life giver. In hope that we might gain true identity. One of the things, well, the reason why people backslide, remember the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. God has come to bring life and life abundantly. For so many of us in the world, when we were in the world, we tried to catch identities from sports players, heroes, whatever it may be, wealthy individuals, trying to be like somebody else. Amen? Amen. We were trying to grab hold of those identities, things that we were brought up with and. You need to get a job. You need to get an education because you need to be somebody. Well, heck, we didn't even know who the heck we were. Well, see, God knew who we were. But the whole thing is, as many people, even in the body of Christ, still don't know who they truly are. They just are living in the body of Christ with no true calling or purpose or destiny. They're just in the body of Christ. They call themselves believers. I have associated with many people that have been believers for years. They go to church every Sunday and so forth. And I'll see them in the park somewhere and the things that they're wearing and the shirts that they're wearing. I'm like, what the snap? I thought this person was a believer. Skull and crossbones and not nice words. Perverse things. Then what the heck? Oh, the, and they're always calling God and giving, telling God help them with this. And I'm thinking, where are you? One of the things the Spirit said is they don't have identity. Because if the enemy can steal identity, he's got you. 
He's got you. Because without identity, you don't know who you are. And if you don't know who you are, the enemy has you because that's a perfect place he wants to put you. Not knowing who you are puts you in a place of deception. Oh, hallelujah. Where there's no identity, there is no destiny. People try to proclaim who they are, but they don't live like who they are. Does everybody understand it? According to attitude, motive, desires, honesty, integrity. When people say that they're a Christian, that means Christ-like, not man-like. We're no longer humanites. We're eternal lights. Amen. This is where we're, we call, fall, fall into that place where Jesus gave you the formula of denying ourselves of the old life and maintaining the righteousness of Christ. Without awareness of God's timing and set boundaries, destiny is delayed. His timing and boundaries are called seasons. Timing and boundaries are called seasons. So he places us in a season that maintain a time or a certain amount of time and boundaries. Does everybody understand that? Everyone say times and boundaries. That's the title. Go to Galatians 4. Oh, happy days. <laughs> Galatians chapter 4. Starting at verse 1. Now I say that an heir, as long as he is a what? Child, does not differ it from a slave, though he is, he is master of all. But under what? Guardians and stewards until the time appointed by the Father. This is where many people move out from the guardians and stewards before God's time. Even so, when we were children, we were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time can come, uh, God sent his son, born of a woman born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law that we might receive the adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying out, Abba, Father, which actually means daddy, because there's a relationship, there's a connection being made. See, you can't fake that. Amen. You can't fake that. Therefore, you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. But then indeed, when you did not know God, you served those which by nature are not gods. But now after you have known God, or rather are known by God, how is it that you turn again to the weak and beggarly elements to which you desire again to be in bondage? Hmm. For I observe days and months and seasons and years. I am afraid for you, lest I have labored for you in vain. At a specific time and set boundaries, God places us under guardians and stewards to learn the ways of God's Spirit. When out of time or beyond boundaries, they will open up again to bondage. That's where the word says, Be anxious for nothing but in prayer and supplication make your requests known to God. God's time, are you ready for this? God's time is his will. 
God's time is his will. His will is his agenda. And his agenda is your destiny. God's time is his will. His will is uh, his agenda, and his agenda is your destiny. We must all maintain the boundaries of obedience that maintains protection so that we maintain in God's timing in everything. That's why when we become a believer, look at the word says something powerful. It says that the, the road for the upright is narrow and difficult. Why? Because those are boundaries. Amen. Amen. So in these boundaries, God places boundaries in our life for a specific time to train us. What he's trying to do is because we've been of the world for so long is get the world out of us. Hmm. In Ephesians chapter 4. In fact, the Bible itself is full of guidances, laws, and boundaries to keep us protected. Not to control us, but to keep us protected. Ephesians chapter 4. The road to home is difficult and narrow, but the road to hell is wide, broad, and easy. You just do what you feel like. <laughs> and you go to hell. <laughs> it's real simple. In verse 11, Ephesians 4, 11. And he himself gave what? Some to be apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For what? The the for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, everyone say perfect man, perfect. to the measure of the statue or the fullness of Christ or the anointing, that we should what? No longer be morons, I mean children. <laughs> Ignorant. Disobedient, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine so that we are not deceived by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. But speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working, by which every part does its share, causes growth of the body for the edifying itself in love. The equipping of the saints, in other words, the equipping of believers, is to reach the master's level, level of nature, character, his divine nature, character and integrity, Again, this equipping is to bring us to the place, it says, to the fullness of the stature of Christ. That means just like him. So the equipping for me and you, because it is the ministry of Christ, isn't it? So then we have to become more like Christ to fulfill ministry. The equipping of the believers to reach the master's level of the divine nature in character and integrity and trust. So no longer rebellious children, but soldiers of Christ in the headless army. Amen. Where Christ is our head. Is everybody okay? Again, God is trying to bring the individuals out of the body into the military. Because if there was more individuals in the military than just sitting in the body, 
we would be far advanced than where we are now. In 2 Timothy chapter 2. Timing and boundaries, times and boundaries. In verse 1, is everybody there? Let's speak it. You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Remember, grace means God's plan. It is not unmerited favor. It's unmerited love. Favor comes by being earned. Amen? Amen? I'm so tired of hearing that. Oh, God's grace. It's, it's his favor. You didn't earn stinking nothing. <laughs> it's his unmerited love. We earn favor. Does everybody get it? We earn it. God's plan is to what? Escape the deception of the enemy and the wrath of God. Because if you don't escape the deception of the enemy, you will get caught up in the wrath of God. Amen? Amen? So he says, you therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to who? Faithful, Faithful men who will be able to what? Teach. Able to what? Teach. Teach. So you call to be teachers? Amen. Amen. A soldier is also a teacher. Amen. To teach others also. You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare, that's spiritual warfare, entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Hmm. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he's not crowned unless he competes according to the what? Rules. According to the what? Rules. rules. So does God place rules in our boundaries? Yes, that's what boundaries are. The hardworking farmer must be first to partake of the crops. Consider what I say. May the Lord give you understanding in all things. Remember that Jesus Christ, the seed of David, was raised from the dead according to my gospel, for which I suffered trouble as an evildoer, even to the point of chains, but the word of God is not chained. Therefore I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they may also obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. This is a faithful saying, for if we died with him, we shall also live with him. If we endure, he shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. If we are faithless, he remains faithful and he cannot deny himself. Again, as a soldier of spiritual warfare, we have been taken out of the body and put into military. The concerns of this life must not affect us or emotionally affect us because of its influence can distract us or mislead us. Amen? Amen. And what's it going to distract us or mislead us from? Our destiny. Again, remember, grace is God's plan. God's plan is his agenda. <laughs> his agenda is our destiny. It cannot be established or fulfilled without cooperating with his timing and boundaries. Ezekiel 33. Oh, yes. Ezekiel chapter 33. Is everybody there? We're going to start at verse 1. Again, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of your people and say to them, When I bring the sword upon the land and the people of the land, take a man from their territory and make him their watchman. Now, is the sword, the sword of the Lord is on the land right now. Please understand. The sword of the Lord is on the land now. Amen. 
when the watchman, when he sees the sword coming upon the land, if he blows the trumpet and warns the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and does not take warning, if the sword comes and takes him away, his blood shall be on his own head. In other words, God sends warning. Remember now that the trumpet is the mouth. I can tell you that the Lord, probably almost every time we gather to the, together, always gives us a warning. He always tells us the strategies of the enemy. Hallelujah. Verse 5. He heard the sound of the trumpet, but did not take warning. His blood shall be upon himself. But he who takes warning will save his life. But if the watchman sees the sword coming and does not blow the trumpet, and the people are not warned, and the sword comes and takes any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood I will require on the watchman's hands. As an officer in the kingdom, I am accountable and responsible to, re to warn. If I don't warn, then blood's on my hands. So you son of man, I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. When he speaks of that, it means by the body of Christ and today. Therefore you shall hear a word from my mouth and warn them for me. When I say to the wicked, O wicked man, you shall surely die, and you do not speak to warn the wicked man from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. Nevertheless, if you warn the wicked to turn from his way, and he does not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but you have delivered your soul. Therefore you, O son of man, say to the house of Israel, thus says, thus you shall say, if our transgressions and our sins lie upon us and we pine away in them, how can we then live? Say to them, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways, for why should you die O house of Israel. Therefore, you, O son of man, say to the children of your people, the righteousness of the righteous man shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. Does everybody hear that? Your righteousness that you have lived, if you choose to make transgression, will not deliver you. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall because of it in the day that he turns from his wickedness, nor shall the righteous be able to live because of his righteousness in the day that he sins. When I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, but he trusts in his own righteousness and commits iniquity, none of his righteous works will be remembered. But because of the iniquity that he has committed, he shall die. So when you break covenant, everything that you have worked for that's been laid in heaven is gone. It's history. You cannot regain that. You must start over again. Does everybody understand that? Does everybody understand this? This is reality. Everything that you've ever done in your life that has put treasures in heaven through righteousness is removed. Is everybody okay? Again, when I say to the wicked, you shall surely die if he turns from his sin and does what is lawful and right. If the wicked restores the pledge, gives back what he has stolen and walks in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live. He shall not die. None of his sins which he has committed shall be remembered against him. He has done what is lawful and right. He shall surely live. Yet the children of your people say, well, the way of the Lord is not fair. But, if, but it is their way which is not fair. When the righteous turns from his righteousness and commits iniquity, he shall die because of it. But when the wicked turns from his wickedness and does what is lawful and right, he shall live because of it. 
Yet you say the way of the Lord is not fair. O house of Israel, I will judge every one of you according to his own ways. Again, warning, warning, warning. The sword of the Lord is on the land to execute judgment on the just and the unjust, on the righteous and the wicked, to turn the people back to their creator, their savior, their king, and commander. When covenant vows are broken, all is lost in the eternal treasures that were built by righteous works. You must start over again and begin and regain position and seat and trust. We are again are put under guardians and stewards again. Better than dying and going to hell. Does everybody understand? To recorrect and renew. To bring us back to a place of humility and submission. It is critical that we understand this. Critical. Because there are many that are going to come back to the kingdom. And think that they can still hold position. Amen. Wrong. Absolutely wrong. That's pride and arrogance to think that you can step on, trample the blood of Christ, insult the spirit of life, and go right back into position where you were. No way. You will earn that position. And if you try to get into that position without earning it, be careful. In Psalm 119, Hallelujah. Amen. The message is not only for warning, it's for bringing understanding because I'm going to tell you that there's going to be an influx of many backslidden believers coming back because the sword of the Lord is out now. Psalm 119, 65. Is everybody there? Psalm 119, verse 65. Let's speak. You have dealt with your servant, O Lord, according to your word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I believe your commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. Hallelujah. In other words, when you say you keep your word, it means you're keeping your covenant and vows with him. You are good and do not and do good. Teach me your statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me, but I will keep your precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, but I delight in your law. It is good for me that I have been afflicted, that I may learn your statutes. The law of your mouth is better to me than thousands of coins of gold and silver. But you know what? You got to remember something. His, this person, individual's persons who went astray was because of coins, gold, silver, money. Hello? And after he'd come out of it, he realized, man, thank you for afflicting me. Why? Because if you didn't do this, I would have kept going. Amen. Amen? He had a cry of rescue, and God accepted him. But that person had to be willing to accept the consequences and corrections, directions, and understand these things. Why? Because to be restored to God's timing and boundaries is a blessing. It's a blessing. But to ignore those things is a curse. Because then it recycles again. Listen, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? If you're right with God and God is before you, then who can be against you? Psalm 34.
Psalm 34. Oh, happy days. Verse 15. Let's speak it together. The eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. So is the eyes of the Lord on the sinner. What about the backslider? No, because they're sinners. Those that are backsliding have broken covenant. Amen? Does everybody understand that? What's he waiting? Waiting for them to repent. God's hand does not move where the blood's not. Does everybody get that? His hand will never move where blood isn't. His blood must be there through what? Repentance. Then his hand moves there. The blood always goes before the spirit. Verse 16. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Can a Christian do evil? Yeah. Well, he's really not a Christian anymore. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out and the Lord hears and delivers them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a what? Broken heart. And saves those that has a contrite spirit. A broken heart. Humble. Humble. Truly repentant. Turning, willing to do whatever it takes. Is everybody okay? Man, you want God close to you? Do you maintain a humble heart? He distanced themselves from those who are prideful. Jeremiah 18. Jeremiah 18, times and boundaries. Very important. We haven't seen anything yet. Again, we're going to see more chaos. We're going to see more bloodshed. We're going to hear about it globally. It's not just about the United States. We might even go under martial law. And it's to protect the people because of all the things that are getting ready to happen. Praise God. In verse 1, Jeremiah 18, but there's going to be a big in, infiltration into the body of Christ of those who've been awakened, especially that have been involved in false religions and stuff like that, religious religions. In verse 1, let's speak it. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will what? Amen. Everyone say cause. cause. Man, you get to a place where finally God says, That's enough. I'm going to cause you to hear me today. Amen. Enough is enough. I'm going to cause you to hear me today. And I will cause you to hear my words. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something at the wheel. The wheel is the Holy Spirit. And the vessel that he made of clay was marred in the hand of the potter, so he made it of what? Again, and again, and again, and again, into another vessel as it seemed good to the potter to make. Now, there are many people who are resisting getting on the potter's wheel. They jump over it. They do everything they can. It's amazing. People praise and worship. Fire! Give me fire! Then when fire comes, no! <laughs> See, fire purifies. <laughs> they run when the fire comes. They cry for it, then they run when it comes. <laughs> Hallelujah. In verse 5. Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, O house of Israel, can I not do with you as this potter, says the Lord? Look at the clay is in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. The instant I speak concerning the nation, concerning the kingdom, 
to pluck up and to pull down and to destroy it. If that nation against whom I have spoken turns from his evil, from its evil, I will relent of the disaster that I thought to bring upon it. Why? Because the sword of the Lord has been already released. In the instant I speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to build it and to plant it, if it does evil in my sight so that it does not obey my voice, then I will relent concerning the good with which I said I would benefit it. Now, nation here is also associated with individual ethnic groups. So he's saying, look at it. Because of disobedience, disaster will come. Affliction. But if you turn from that, I will release the goodness. Amen? Amen. Verse 11. Now, therefore, speak to the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, Thus says the Lord, Behold, I am fashioning a disaster and devising a plan against you. Return now, everyone, from his evil way and make your ways and your doings what? Good. Make them good. Now, the potter's wheel, again, is the Holy Spirit. Don't resist, but submit to the chastening and remolding to squeeze the pride of self righteousness out. Self-entitlement, false humility, and worldly lusts and desires. The purpose of it is to squeeze these things out. You know, if you think about it, I don't know how you know if a, a diamond is made, but a diamond is made of coal. How does it become so precious? It's pressured and squeezed so hard for a long period of time that it actually turns into a diamond. Now, a diamond is transparent, isn't it? Amen. Amen. When gold is heated at a certain temper, temperature, it not only reflects, but it can also become transparent. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. So we need to not only be aware of God's timing and boundaries, but we need to take them seriously. You know, the Lord says, I chasten those I love. Believe me, you don't have to break covenant to be chastened. For much is given, much is required. Amen. Snap. I'll never forget it. Uh, I did something stupid. Well, it was a few days ago. <laughs> <laughs> Weekly. <laughs> Anyways, um, I, uh, I was in the park. And uh, I, I had this antique limousine. It was a 46 Christ or stretch, stretch limo. And I was selling it to get money because I was out of money. And I didn't know what to do. And so I was in a park and I, and, I, and I parked the car in this park and I went into the woods. And I began to cry out to the Lord and pray. And all of a sudden this guy drives by. I hear this clunker truck backfiring and everything. And it parks way out there. And the dude's yelling at me, hey! Man, you what? I'm thinking, man, he can't be talking to me. He must be looking for somebody else in here. And he's going, yo, you, in there! I want to buy your car! I said, whoa. And I thought about it. And I couldn't really see the guy. And my first thought was, hey, yeah, he's probably drunk. <laughs> And as soon as I said, thought that, I smelled liquor, booze. But he wasn't even near me. And that kind of triggered me. And I, what, something's up. And as I got closer and closer to him, he was this big, dark man, big guy. And he says, I want to buy your car. And I said, well, uh, I want 35 grand for it. He says, I know you want 35 grand for it. 
but I'm going to offer you so much money. I forgot what he did. And I said, but I got all this in it. And he goes, I know how much you got in it, but I got all the money you need. I got all the money you need, he said. I don't know. And, and all of a sudden, people came from nowhere, like out of the woods almost, started looking around the car and distracting them. I'm trying to talk to this guy. And as he's talking to me, I'm, I looked at his car and it was like a piece of garbage. And it needed tires badly. It was bald tires. I'm thinking, how's he going to give me any money? He's going to give me 10 grand for this thing and offer me 10 grand or something it was or 15, I don't know. And I'm thinking, man, this guy's, I'm looking at the tires and I'm thinking, man, he's got bald tires. And the dude says, I'm on my way to get new tires. And I'm realizing something's going on. He's reading my mind. So then my next thought was, he's going to go eat lunch at Kentucky Fried Chicken. And he said the same thing. I'm going to go eat lunch at Kentucky Fried Chicken. I'm thinking, what the snap? Now, I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit and myself, after my visitation from the Lord, I used to call Holy Spirit buddy because he was my buddy. He would wake me up every day. He'd take me, show me how to read him. And he was in my buddy. Where you at, man? So all of this distraction was around me. And, and so he says, listen, I'm getting ready to go now. Going to go eat and go get tires. And I said, what do you want? And he goes, well, I said, look, do you, can, can you just give me your phone number in the card and write your name down here and, 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 and I'll call you as soon as I get out of this. Because all these people were coming from everywhere. So he writes down the stuff and gives it to me. I put it in my pocket. All of a sudden, he goes and everybody else goes. I'm there by myself in the park. And I get in the car and I'm, and I shut the door and all of a sudden, man, I could tell something was wrong. Like, I blew it, didn't I? My arrogance, you kept telling me, you have everything. Why didn't I just take the price? Because I wanted more. In other words, and I could sense that there was a conviction coming. And man, I started repenting, going, man, I'm sorry. I know. So, so I drove home quickly because I didn't have a phone. And I had to drive home and, and got the phone at the house. And I looked at the number and I called the number and <gasps> there was nothing. And I looked at the name. I got a man, what I got to call this guy something? And the name was Buddy. <laughs> Believe me, for three days. He'd lifted from me. And it was terrible. I wept and repented consistently. And I kept saying, I'll never reject what you offer me again. Come on back. <laughs> For three days. And when he showed up, he said, much is given, much is required. It wasn't a gentleness, it was a sternness. Much is given, much is required, guy. Got it. Won't do it again. Man, I about gave that car away. I sold it for 2500 bucks. I wanted it out of here. <laughs> I regretted that later, but anyways. <laughs> I share this because of the relationship is vital. 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 To know that you are a child of the creator. The one that created you decided to reveal himself to you. <laughs> How can we say no to that? How can we say no to salvation? How can we say no to he knows better than we do? Pride. Pride. And when the enemy slips pride in and we drift, you can expect chastening. Again, you don't have to break covenant to be chastened. Amen? Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did we do Psalm 1 yet? No. Let's speak it. Amen. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of the sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Blessed is that person that avoids all this garbage. 
but his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law he meditates day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf shall also not wither. And whatever he does shall what? Prosper. But the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which are the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in judgment. In other words, in this judgment he speaks of reward. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Psalm 34. And then two more scriptures. And we can all go home and repent. <laughs> Psalm 34, verse 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blesses the man who trusts in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you saints. Everyone say, fear the Lord. Fear the, Lord. the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. There is no want to those who fear him. Hello, this fear is reverence, honor, and respect. You cannot fear the Lord without relationship. And you can't do it without the Holy Spirit. You just can't. It says, the fear of the Lord, there is no want. In other words, because of that, he's going to bless you. He's going to give you what you need all the time. You will never lack. Never. Amen? The young lions lack and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good thing. Come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the fear of the Lord. Who is a man who desires life? And loves many days that he may see good. Keep your tongue from evil. Amen? So I tell people, tie it in a bowl. It looks good that way. And your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The fear of the Lord was lacked. That's why people went astray. Amen? And they were afflicted. Judgment will bring the fear of the Lord. That's why the sword of the Lord is on the earth, because it's going to bring the fear of the Lord. You and I are to set the Lord before us all the time. You want to avoid judgment of the sword of the Lord? Maintain the fear of the Lord. Psalm 61. Psalm 61. Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter. Have anybody ever been overwhelmed? If you haven't been, you're a liar. <laughs> Everybody gets overwhelmed at some time. The problem is everybody goes to the phone and not the throne. He said, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower from, the, from uh, my enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle. So we see something powerful. He calls him. He said, lead me to the rock that is higher than high. You've been a shelter. Amen. A strong tower. Verse 4, I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. Wow. So the tabernacle, the shelter, the strong tower, and then under the wings. That's the most holy place. For you, O God, have heard my vows. You have given me the heritage of those who fear your name. You will prolong my life. It says king's life, but you and I are called to be kings and priests. My years as many generations. 
you shall ob- he shall abide, we shall abide before God forever. Oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve us. I will sing praise to your name forever that I may what? Daily perform my vows. I will sing praise to you daily. See, the cry of the humble, seek and run to him. They understand that he is the shelter, the tower, the, the tabernacle, and the wings of the most holy place. You prolong my life because we abide. You prolong our life because we abide in him and before him. We need mercy and truth. Only abiders perform the vows of covenant and commitment. And I'm going to close at Psalm 24. Now, abiders are those who know God's timing and boundaries. Psalm 24. By trusting God, you trust the guardians and stewards so that you may be fully equipped, lacking nothing. Verse 1, the earth is the Lord's in all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For he has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the waters. Who may ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who may stand in his holy mountain, which is the tabernacle? He who has what? Clean hands and a pure heart. Who has not lifted up his soul to an idol nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive what? Blessing. Blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is Jacob, the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face. Lift up your heads, O you gates, and be lifted up, you evil everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your head, O you gates. Lift up your everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of the army. The Lord of hosts. He is the king of glory. King of glory. Lord of hosts. Abiders. Knowing God's timing and boundaries. Everything right now that you are hearing is about fulfilling destiny. Destiny. But you must be called. You have a call. You have a purpose. And you have a destiny. The enemy is trying to prevent, delay, or distract destiny. And God is trying to restore his people. Because if we're all in destiny... If we're all in the place of movement forward, then we're all like-minded. And we become more of a battleground, warriors and stronger in, in the spirit instead of just scattered. Amen? It's time to take your position and your seat in the kingdom and in the military more seriously. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you protect the seed that's been imparted in us and allow us to allow to grow and bear fruit for your glory. As we commit all things to you, Lord, keep us in a place where we are aware and sensitive to our boundaries, timing, and limitations. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.